The fans of Fishing 411 TV often ask, what is our favorite fish and fishing destination? Our answer, Motown Walleye, surprises a lot of people. Fishing the Detroit River is a tradition in the Romanac family. Countless fish from both Lake St. Clair and Lake Erie converge on the D in April and May. Jake Romanac teams up with offshore tackle pro staffer Rob Jones to put the smack down on a live well full of Detroit River eyes. Absolutely stellar. What a gorgeous fish. We're going to get a quick picture for Facebook and then she's going back to do some spawning. This week's episode is shot in the Detroit River in southeast Michigan. Now, the Detroit River is one of the shortest rivers in America, but what it lacks in length, it more than makes up for in fishing quality. The walleye run in the Detroit River in the spring is legendary. Hooked up, Rob. Uh, Hooked up. Yes, Woo sir. That didn't take long. It did <laughs> not take long at all. Dropped it to the bottom. Feel that tunk. Hold on. We're let me get digging that, on the Jake. Detroit River today. And I'm with my good buddy Rob Jones. Hold on. Not a huge one, but a good start to the day. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Very nice. Nice fish. Nice. Not a bad start, buddy. No. That's the yes, perfect sir. eater. You know, Ooh. the Detroit River, this is a time for quality fish. So we do, we both of us have a chance of catching a big fish oh, today. Yeah. And if we get that, you know, we're going to put those fish back. But this is a male. There are a ton of these fish in the system right now. So, Deke, you got yourself a fish sandwich there right you here, go, buddy. buddy. We'll there put you this go. in the live well and get set back up. There you go, buddy. You know, one of the coolest things we get to do at Fishing 4 one is create actual fishing products, products that you get to take out in your boat and fish. But one of the things we have to do when we're creating these products is actually fish them ourselves and make sure it's a product that we can hang our hats on. And we're doing that today with a product called the Hammer Time Jig. Now this jig will be created by Yakima Bay Company. And what we wanted to do is create a jig that was a high quality jig, something that really stands out. It has a high quality, very, very sharp hook on it. It's a horizontal style bullet shaped jig, but it's also a stand up jig. And it's something that's just not on the market right now. So today Rob Jones and I are gonna be fishing this Hammer Time Jig and we're gonna be prototyping it. By the time this show airs, this will be a product that you can buy and fish in your boat. So right now we have just different colored paints. This color that I have right here might not even be an available option. We're still playing with that. But again, that's something really cool we get to do here at Fishing 4 on one And I promise you when this jig hits the market, it's gonna be one you're gonna to wanna to have in your boat. Fish. Ooh. Come to Detti. Hooked up D, huh? Yes, sir. Oh yeah, nice one. <laughs> Down in the net. Yes, sir. A nice little eater. Yes, sir. Let's see what this fish came on. You always got, you always got to look with you. You never know what you got going yes, on. Yes, sir. A little paddle tail there. Yes, sir. On that hammer time jig. Yes, sir. And the stingers what stung that one right there. Got that stinger hook. Down his throat. You took me to the little town, didn't you? There Let's you find go. some big ones. Well, let's hash this out a little bit. We're on the Detroit River. 
The Detroit River is world renowned for walleye fishing, but as you can tell, it's pretty windy today. So boat control is the most important thing. Uh, in river fishing in general, but right now as windy as it is, you definitely have to have great boat control. So Rob and I are gonna switch throughout the day up on the front of the boat because we're gonna have to take breaks. You gotta stay up there, you gotta stay vertical to catch walleyes. So Rob's up on the bow right now, I'm back here fishing, he's keeping the boat perfectly vertical. If I hook a fish, Rob can come back and help me, but if Rob hooks a fish, then I can go up to the front of the boat and then also control the boat at the same time. And we both have key fobs around our neck. So if Rob's doing something, I can control the boat, and if I'm doing something, Rob can control the boat. We're gonna do that all day to put a lot of walleyes in the boat. This is a good spot because this is a, a, a primary breeding spot. When they come in here, they got everything. They got, shelf, they got a shelf, they got current, they got mud, they got rock, and they got a lot of bait. There's a lot of bait in here, right up this side right here. A lot of bait. So after they get through spawning, they sit there for a minute and then they come out here and eat. Then they get back on their trail, back out to the lake. It's all done. But right now, I'm about to feed them a twofer. I'm piggybacking a minnow on top of a minnow to make a bigger presentation. And if I get struck by one and he takes, and I miss him, he takes one off, I still got another one down there for him to get. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Stryker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Uh, it's we right. red tail, Jake. Right Ooh, feels good. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, he's already coming oh, up. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> Got him a, not a bad fish. Nice fish. Oh, that one's like got little shoulders on him. Getting a little bigger, Jake. Our average is starting to go up a little bit. Yes, sir. I like that. Oh, that's a nicer fish, Jake. Let me get him out of the net. Yes, sir. That's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. You must have punked it too, huh? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. I've been waiting to fill that all day. What do you got on there? I know that you've been tipping it with a minnow. Yeah. Looks like you got a, a black wine dot worm, huh? Yes, sir. And that hammer time jig. Hammer time. And then the Deacon Smash Master does what he does best. Yes, and sir. And let jig up some walleyes. Yes, sir. <laughs> this hammer time jig and this black wine dot worm it's real good in this water. This water is dirty. It's right, it's right at the edge of not being able to fish it to jig. So what I do is I go with a, a light chartreuse head or orange and chartreuse head, but I use a black body because the black body is, is solid. And what it does is you can see it better than uh, a brown or a gray or something in this dirty water. So with that being said, if you got the black on it, uh, it tends to show up better and you get more fish. Yep. Our guest on this week's episode is Rob Jones and we call him the Deacon Smash Master. And the reason we call him this is because he's a deacon in his local church and I've never met anybody with a jig rod in his hand who's any tougher to beat than Rob Jones. He is an outstanding jig fisherman, one of the best I've ever met. So anytime we get a chance to fish with Rob, he's on the boat, especially if it's a jig bite. When I'm jigging in cold water, where the fish are more lethargic. I move very slow. You jig slow. Uh, the fish, they, not want, they don't want to chase anything. They basically just want it there. So you can pick it up off the bottom a little bit, put it back down, pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down. And sometimes you just barely move it. As the water warms up, you speed up your cadence. You jig a little faster and you jig a little higher. The water gets warmer, they get more active. And if you remember that, you'll always put fish in the boat. When it's cold, when you think you're going slow, go slower. As it heats up, you speed up. That'll put more fish in your boat. Whenever your fishing is tough, I go to minnows. I always go to a minnow if it's tough. Woo <laughs> With that hammer time, baby, he ain't going nowhere. No, sir. Hammer time. Can't touch this. <laughs> yes, baby. Nice little eater right there, Jake. It's been a real subtle bite so far today, and uh, that's kind of indicative in cold water jig fishing. 
I think I'm probably just going to alley-oop this one, Deke. It's been kind of addictive to, you know, this actually got more shoulders on it than I thought. Nice fish. No, we're not going to alley-oop that. Woo! Very nice fish. That one kind of surprised me a little bit. Drive the boat towards him a little bit because he's been barely hooked. Let's keep it tight. Nice fish. Nice fish. Yes, sir. That one very much surprised me on his yes, side. Yes, sir. He grew when he got to the surface. <laughs> I like you that. You think he's going to alley me? Yeah. I don't think so. He definitely did not feel like a big one until all of a sudden, there he was. Deke, that's a lot nicer fish. That's she a lot nicer fish. all spawned out. All spawned out, and she just done it. And we're starting to get that mix right now. The water's 44, 45 degrees, and so these fish are starting to spawn. You have fish that haven't spawned yet. You have fish that have this one's obviously, looks like this one's been spawned out for a little while now, but beat up, not as pretty after they spawn, huh? No, they're not. But that bite's just been real subtle. Again, that stinger hook has been so important today uh, just to get those fish to bite. When the water's cold, jig slow. When the water warms up, jig a little bit faster. Jig faster. And you'll catch a bunch of fish. Yes. We're gonna still put this girl back. She's had a rough life. She just got done spawning. Yeah. The last thing she needs to do is be a sandwich. We're gonna put her back. Yeah. Beautiful fish. Big sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> You know, plastics are a real important part of jig fishing, and there's a ton of different types of plastics out there, but I'm gonna break it down to three categories for you. Uh, if you're coming to the Detroit River, something that you're gonna wanna have in your boat when you come to the river. The very first one is a worm style plastic. Right here is this uh, local favorite, it's called the Wyandotte worm. And they come in different colors, but here this black one's been working well for us today. This Wyandotte worm's got a little bit subtle action to it, and I like it when the bite's a little bit tougher. Now when the water starts to warm up, a really popular plastic is a finesse style minnow. Again, a little bit more subtle action, but this bait right here works really good. Now the third plastic that I love to use, but that's as the water starts to warm up a little bit, is a paddle tail style plastic. Now this one right here is made by Z-Man Plastic. It's got a paddle tail to it, a little bit more thump, a little bit more vibration, and as that water warms up and those fish get a lot more active, a paddle tail is something that you want to have in the boat. So the thing of it is, is you really never know on any given day what plastic's going to work. So you want to buy a lot of plastics, keep them right in the boat with you, and switch them out throughout the day to figure out what plastics is best on that given day. Special considerations provided by Precision Trolling, the Troller's Bible. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on Fishing. You know, in Fishing 411, we often use scent products like Procure for all types of applications. But one of the downsides of scent is traditional scents, the oil-based and the paste-style scents, can only be used on certain lures. You can use them on hard baits, you can use them on crankbaits and spoons, but you really can't use them on any kind of a lure that has a feather or a hackle or a bucktail. And the reason for that is that those greasy scents will mat down the feathers and really eliminate any action or natural action that those lures might have. So what do you do in this instance? Thankfully, we got a new product by Yakima Bait called the Rooster Tail Spray Scent. Essentially what it is, is it's a water-soluble oil, and it's made by Procure. And the beauty of this is that one squirt on your favorite lures, like a spinner or maybe a bucktail jig or a marabou jig, and you've got a scent stream that lasts for about 30 minutes, but it also allows these lures to function in the water exactly the way they were intended. Rooster Tail Scent Spray comes in a little pump bottle. It's very convenient to use. One squirt is all you need to get the job done. Rooster tail spray scent comes in eight different formulas, perfect for every fishing application. Nice fish. Must have been a pretty good spot, Dee, because I'm hooked up too, buddy. Yes, sir. This is... Hold on, Jake. Let me grab your net for you. You know we're on the right spot when we both go fish right at the same time. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh, this one's staying down pretty good. Let me see. Oh, yeah, nice fish. Oh, nice. Hey, it's a really nice oh. one. <laughs> That's there you cool. go, buddy. Very nice. Yes, sir. Just barely lip hooked on that Ooh. stinger, too. Uh huh. Sweet. Stingers are the name of the game today yes, for sir. sure. That's a beautiful fish. 
That's Dick, a really nice fish, buddy. I'm gonna put this one back. Let's put that one back. This I, one's I gotta think, go back. Yeah, this one was I nice think that enough one needs to, to bite. go back. Big old fat belly on that fish oh, right there. Yeah. She's gotta go back and do some spawning. I think so. Make a few more so we can come back out and catch a bunch more. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's take a second and go through the basic rod and reel setup that you're going to need when you come to the Detroit River to vertical jig. You know, the issue with vertical jigging the Detroit River, uh, as well as like the St. Clair River and your deeper river systems, is that there really isn't a rod and reel uh, setup, I think, that's stiff enough for the application. And so what I personally do is I make my own. Now, I like the RG setups from Daiwa here. This particular rod is very comfortable in my hand. It doesn't weigh very much, and that's important because you're going to have that rod in your hand all day. So what I actually do is I take a 6.6 medium action rod. It's the RG series from Daiwa, and I take an arrow saw, and I cut six inches off the tip. I know that sounds crazy. You're taking a $100 rod and cutting it right away when it's brand new, but I take six inches off the tip, and I put a new tip top on there. What that allows is it makes a much stiffer rod. Now when you're fishing places like the Detroit River, you're fishing a fairly heavy jig. And my rule of thumb is that I don't want the rod to bend from the weight of the jig. So I use a heavier action rod. Now like I said, I've created my own in this application. Now the next thing that's really important is the reel. But the one thing you want to keep in mind is to have a relatively small size reel. You put a bigger size reel on there, all it does is add weight to the setup and then you find yourself getting fatigued halfway throughout the day. The next piece of the puzzle is braided line. Now that's very important because braided line has no stretch in it and that's very important for any river jigging situation. Now this high vis braid that I have here is what I like. I like that high vis because I can see the line very easily. Now we're going to go all the way down to the end, actually where the jig is, and I have that high-vis braid, but what I like to do is I like to tie a fluorocarbon leader. Now a fluorocarbon leader can be a few feet long, that part isn't really important. The reason why I use a fluorocarbon leader doesn't have anything to do with line shyness. These fish only have a split second, they're either going to eat it or they're not going to eat it. But the fluorocarbon leader is there for if you get snagged up on the bottom, I want that jig to break at the fluorocarbon leader much easier to break fluorocarbon than it is if you tie direct to the braid. So that fluorocarbon leader is kind of your, your breakaway system, if you will. The braid and the fluorocarbon is tied with a double union knot. And the knot that I use to tie it in my jig is just a basic clinch knot. Now this basic clinch knot is very easy to tie. It's very strong. It's going to hold any fish that you're going to catch. I know that this knot's going to break before the double uni knot's going to break. What that allows is the jig to break off. I can retie the fluorocarbon leader and I'm right back in action again. So from the rod to the reel to the line to the jig that you use is all important when it comes to vertical jigging. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Daiwa Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. There's one, Deke. How I feel? He absolutely tunked it, man. <laughs> I actually missed that fish, dropped back down, missed him again, lifted back up. He got it on the third time's a charm, I guess. Did it. Same thing happened to me, not just a minute ago. All right. Got the boat drifting over him here. Staying down nice. One more. Oh, starting to see some color. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes, sir. Very nice fish. Very nice, nice Rob. Fish. Oh my goodness. That is a very nice walleye. And he, when I say when he tunked it, I mean that he really ate it. And there's two types of bites that you have when you're vertical jigging. You have that lift up and there's just weight. That's mm -hmm. the one that guys struggle with. But this one, it didn't matter who you were. You were gonna know that that yes, fish sir. bit. Just a thunk in the line. No doubt that that fish bit. And you can see he's got that hook absolutely just buried in there. Starting to get a little bit, uh, at least this one was more charged up. Yeah. You know, and uh, I know there was no minnow on there because like I said, I'd missed him a couple times. Yeah. So um, he just wanted it. He wanted it bad. Nice walleye. We're gonna get this one back because uh, she's still tight. She's still got some eggs. Hey, Jay. Jake. A good one, Deke? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a nice fish. Hold on here. I'll help. Let me grab the net. That's a very nice fish. <laughs> Jake. Off in the net, too, Deke. Listen, that fish hit it the first time. I missed him, dropped down. And he came back again and whacked it. Those are the kind of fish I need to catch. Yeah. The very, very hungry ones. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, look at that, Jake. That's a nice meal right there. Look at that. That is a really That's, nice fish. Uh, remember, uh, we had those small fish 
we, we caught them for a few years. Yeah. These are those small fish now. Yeah. They didn't grow to, to nice, what, 17, 18 inch fish. It doesn't Beautiful. take long, you know, it takes three years for a walleye to reach sexual maturity. And here in the Lake Erie system, these walleyes grow super fast. So, I mean, that's, a, that's easily an 18 inch fish right there. Um, coming from that 2014 year class is yeah. what that is. Yep, I totally we've had, agree with you. We've had some great year classes. The fish each year are getting a little bit bigger, a little bit healthier, and uh, for you, a little bit more meat on those bones, huh? Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Jake. It's a good fish deke, huh? Yes, Jake. No, Jake. Let me come up. Very nice fish. There we go. <laughs> it's got a belly on it, huh? Yes, it does. Woo! Yes, it does. Let's pull I this think fish we up. should let that one go. Yes, sir. <laughs> that one's got a belly on it, Deke. Oh, yes, she does. She's a chunker. <laughs> Hey, I really appreciate you jumping on the boat with me today and showing me more about the Detroit River. Always love spending time in the boat with you. Hey, Jake, whenever you're coming down, give me a call, and I'll be willing to jump on the boat with you. Hey, my name's Jake Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 4-on-1. We'll see you here same time, same place next week. This one's got to go back. she got to go back and do what <laughs> she's meant to do. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Ontario, Canada, Starcraft Marine, Yakima Bait Company, Smooth Moves, Niagara Falls, USA, Lawrence Electronics, Evinrude Outboards, and by Jay's Sporting Goods. Not a Wally Gator, buddy. <laughs> i tell you what, I don't know if there's anything more fun than jig fishing and catching big old fish like this one right here. Oh, boy. Look at this thing. Oh, oh yeah. baby. Yes. Go to taxidermy. Mount it on the wall. The boat.